You're known as an abstract painter. No, that's fine. I don't mind being called that. But you, as you say just now, you, you're, you've been working with sexual imagery, imagery, period. And yeah. I find that interesting in how you how you assimilated that into your already existing style or, or way of working. I gave myself permission. You know, I mean, I guess your camera's on this painting. It's you know, this is like a. a I think of it as a, a mouth with rows of teeth. I mean, people who see it see the, the teeth as tongues. And I say, oh, I, think, I thought they were teeth. They say, well, they're too soft to be teeth. But it doesn't mean they don't get a feeling for the picture. Then they think, oh my, well, it could be a mouth full of hundreds of tongues. So I'll make works that have extremely procedural, um, procedural underpinnings. Um, but the procedures are only part of the work. Uh, there's there's all kinds of psychological or emotional content that I don't really necessarily want to go into about my private life, about, uh, you know, any number of things, sexual things, emotional things. But it, clearly abstraction is an anchor as a kind of, a kind of base. Yeah, and it's a tradition. Work it's and a tradition. Yeah, it's a tradition. And the legacy and the tradition that you, at least early on, um, signed on to. Yeah, well, I, it's it's sort of my first community, you know. Arthur Dove or Marsden Hartley or Georgia O'Keeffe or um, John Marin, you know, these were some of the people that really got me going as a student. I loved the modesty of the work, modesty and ambition of the work. There's a confidence in that kind of work. There's a, there's a sense in that work that it's just saying, I'm here, I'm not going anywhere, I'm in a normal-sized context, in a normal-sized uh, scale, non, you know, it's, it's the size of your bread box, your television, your, you know, all the little things in your life that are manageable. Um, yeah, I love that. I love that, I love the, I love the humility and ambition of that kind of work. I always have. I grew up in Washington, D.C. in the 60s until I was 12. And then in 69, we moved to California. I, mean, I, st I started figure drawing as, as young as 13 or so. I mean, I went to Spain for a while and hung out in Mallorca and hung out with Miquel Barceló, who's now this Spanish national treasure. So my work was very processed. It was, it was detailed, but I was, I was making these paints out of uh, unconventional materials and, and regular pigments. And Mikel was giving me these weird pigments that he, people were digging out of the ground in Mallorca and strange earth colors. And he were making very uh, material-oriented paintings with lots of crack allure and, you know, just physic physicality. And then I started making paintings out of all kinds of stuff, hair and dirt and and a petrified sheep shit. I actually have petrified sheep shit paintings somewhere around here. But they were mainly just pour out the paint, let it dry, let it do its thing, let it express its essential structure. And, uh, you know, it just wasn't that hard to do. It was, you know, I'd spent a lot of time like smoking hash and watching the paint dry. And I finally um, started to just craft, craft the structures that I was interested in, in, in craft the, these intricate forms. I used um, some of the first things that I think of really mature pictures were, were paintings of number chains. And then I had that epiphany at the scrapyard with Alan Serrett. You know, we, we were digging through these barrels and he said, you should check, check this metal out. And I was 
I'll show you a painting from that first walk, actually. Oh, this is, this is a titanium plate. Oh, wow, well, yes, somebody made these little cleats recently, because this was in a show up at Cornell uh, this year. But this was just the, the size as I found it, and I painted on it. Then I epoxied these little cleats on the back, which I... Is this the actual painting? Or? This is the painting. This is a painting. Yeah, one of the yeah, ones from that first walk with Alan, yeah. And what year is that? Uh, 8990. Yeah, there's another one. I mean, I was, I was making some ink drawings too around this time. This one. That's from uh, 88. I consider that a mature work. You know, or maybe a late adolescent. <laughs> Let's see what year this one is. This is on steel. 90. And this is this is you know really key work from '96. Oh, I never, I never in the my wildest fantasies ever thought that Pace Gallery would represent me. Actually, I thought I'd be a kind of a minor artist, a well-known minor artist. <laughs> I'd like to be you know, like a hundred people's favorite artists, you know, out of, out of the entire planet, you know. Um, and, you know, people who like eccentric uh, weirdos uh, who, who stick to some kind of weird language that they've invented. I mean, I want to be important. I have ambition to be remembered and to have done something significant to, in the discourse, the discourse serious the cocktail party that everybody wants to be at and you know and be heard a very very different image that's sepia ink and white gouache that's white gouache I keep flashing on Robert Crumb with all this yeah yeah people do yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> nothing I can do about it <laughs> he's well. great what can I say? He's great. That, I, am I ripping him off? I don't think I, I, I wouldn't even go there. I mean, it's just so far from it, but it seems like this sort of umbilical connection. Like yeah. You're, you're drawing off something similar, but getting yep. something totally different out of it. I hope, uh, I hope it's seen as an homage. everything in. It doesn't mean it's finished, but there's a kind of completeness without little mosaic chunks of unfinishedness. It's not unpleasant to look at. <laughs> That's a start, but you know, I still have to paint the white in here because this is the primer layer. So I'll paint the white in there and then maybe change my mind. <laughs> 